Previously on Critically Stupid. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the objective best podcast I can even think of right now, Critically Stupid. Now, I'm pretty sure you remember last week's episode word for word, but on the off chance that you don't, I'm here to refresh thy memory. Now, as we find ourselves quite often, we were in the sewer. Uh, I encountered a woman with a skull painted on her face very intimidatingly. Uh, she was conducting a gaggle of skeletons who were fighting a group of ravens. And I don't mean ravens like the birds or ravens like the football team. But I mean the big humanoid f- fucked up angry ravens. Those ones. Now, Arnold and Mel were fighting off against two skeletons, one of them named Quentin Tarantine Bone, holding a severed leg as a weapon. And Arnold, in the scurry, cast Shatter, blowing the ground to smithereens, sending tremors deep into the earth. Now, in this explosion, out popped a rat, Prince Curry, the rat prince, running out into the fray, holding the stone of galore in its mouth. And in hot pursuit of Tim Scurry with Tim the Beholder, and when, main, uh, when making eye contact with Arnold, very much regretted his presence before moving to attack. Arnold cast in large on the rat as it ran into the battle, and I dove for the Stone of Galore and missed, obviously, but I teleported to my knife that was in the hide of the creature. And as I teleported, I heard a voice in my ear. I told you I was going to get mine. And I was split in two. Uh, physically, me- me- mentally, more. I'm not really sure. I don't know. It was re- real, real metaphysical. Uh, but parts of me was attached to the rat, rocketing to the streets above, holding for dear life onto the stone of galore. I'm sure I'll be fine. Can you hear the fan in my background? <laughs> Can you hear the fan in my background? Yay, Gary, and you're amazing! <laughs> 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 Here we go. Uh, let's have a good show, everybody. Don't tell me what to do. Have a bad show. It's What's going like on, it. everybody? Welcome to your soon-to-be world-famous Dungeons & Dragons Real Play comedy podcast, Critically Stupid. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Alexander James, and we're going to have a bad show, according to Garyan. First I'm one very ever. excited for that. First one yeah. Ever. <laughs> yeah, first one ever. <laughs> first Can't one. Uh, my We've favorite done- part of last episode was... Uh, probably our guest, Ronnie, who played the Necromancer Esme. She had a, a lot of really great spells and like actions that helped the, the the gang do some crazy stuff. And I thought she was delightful and she played well in the space. So I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Ronnie. We have a guest on our show today. It is Travis from the Bar Banter Podcast. Uh, Travis, what was your favorite part of last episode? When Gareth dove headfirst to try to get that stone from the rat and just ended up in a pile of shit somehow. Like, incredible, absolutely hilarious. 
It somehow happens every episode. Every episode. You wouldn't think it, right? It'd be like statistically, it would feel <laughs> like a little forced after a while, but gosh darn it, if there isn't a big old pile of poo for Gar- for you, Garrett you, to go. You know how comedy normally comes in threes? Think again. Three hundreds. <laughs> I all all I think of is that George of the Jungle bit where the narrator where the guy says bad guy falls in poop. <laughs> Classic. God, that movie's so good. It it's really crazy is. how instrumental that movie was in my sense of humor. That makes a lot of sense. Travis, who's going next? Anthony. All right. What was your favorite part? You don't know our names, do you? I don't. Now. I'm Anthony. Well, I mean, why would he? Why would he? He's never been on the show before. All right. I'm Anthony. I and play you're not a loyal listener. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to shake you. I'm going to shake you. I love you so much. Just, I love you. I've never loved anyone like this. Okay. A lot of love. I'm Anthony. I play Arnold the Bard. And my favorite part of the last episode was when um I took a giant shit on the floor and <laughs> Gareth just fell right into it. It was amazing. Arnold just had to go so bad and he couldn't stop. It was just he was it was very musical. Yep. Um no, my, my real favorite part of the last episode was uh when aside from Ronnie, because Ronnie was like hilarious with like, why are you guys doing this to my yeah. friends? Like what these are my cohort, you know, that was hilarious. I really liked when the mouse came in and I like my whole body, I was just like, I got this. I'm doing something right in this campaign. Like, I'm finally, like, I'm in the right place at the right time with the right spell. Nothing can stop me. I finally have this stone that we've been looking for. This is it. We're going to hit credits on this campaign because, like, I got this. And then Alex was like, no, nah, instead there's a beholder that's going to pop out <laughs> and ruin your life. And I'm like, oh, Tough cool. In. This is D&D, I forgot. <laughs> so that was pretty great, though. Yeah. Um, Diana, you're next. Uh, hi, my name is Diana. I play Mel. I also have the Wolf Club, Joshua Patrick, Josh Pat JPZ. Um, my favorite part of last episode, I'm going to be honest, I, uh, I'm i kind of back to shitty memory today. I don't feel well. I've been quite sick. It was when Diana's memory shit on the yeah. floor next to Arnold. <laughs> Just compiling. Into... That's about where I lost it, honestly. So I'm sure it'll come back to me as we go or it'll take me a year to remember this episode since that and then it'll be perfect though how do you even do that yeah because you could you could be like oh isn't this the npc that we met like 18 episodes ago i don't know it just like like it speaks to like it's got to be stored in there somewhere right like maybe it's an access problem (laughs) i i'm not i'm not sure Mm. garyan uh hello (laughs) my my name is Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak and I play Gareth. Uh, my favorite part of last episode has got to be the flawlessly executed Ranger Rogue alley oop that we pulled off, where some guy was just approaching Gareth with murderous intent, and then in between breaths, an arrow sp- spouted from his neck and a knife spawned in his rib cage. Very See impressive. what we can do when there's not bards and cows getting in our way <laughs> uh, no before... hate to the bard or the cow true 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 uh before we jump into it uh travis where the fuck did you get that picture my guy you just took don't a worry about it shot. Clearly from no the that's old not me now. Not his background right now yeah <laughs> no it was it was from this past week's episode when you were doing uh one of the the middle segments and i just i kept clicking until i found a a, a screenshot that looked perfect, and that's uh, that's the one I picked. All right, that's fair though, because he gets to pick all like the YouTube thumbnails, so he exactly. can pick like a great one looking of of him, and then for the rest of us, it's gonna look like <laughs> shit. So I'm not mad. Every at Every time us. there's a new video, I'm like, oh, I wonder what the th- what the thumbnail <laughs> is, and it's just me going. <laughs> oh, it's always some not flattering image. Darian, it was very difficult for me to not choose one of you because there are just so many of them i mean there's like a plethora that. of options the, yeah this the youtube thumbnail game specifically like gary and always makes a dumb face uh <laughs> D- diana is always eating a snack at some point so there's always a moment where she's just like snacks today so you're you know, you're a little fucked on the thumbnail the so, tricky but... one is anthony because every time anthony laughs he moves away from the camera and it's actually very That's difficult right. to catch his face so i gotta get him when he's doing something like on his because when he talks, he uses his hands, and that's usually what I can get. Uh, 
something from the, him. The be- the best thumbnail is the one that was semi recently where I'm just like the exact center, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Okay, let's uh, let's do a warm up together. Uh, there is, I think, in a uh hobby hall somewhere in the middle of water deep in the middle of a busy day a presentation going on in front of a committee a enthusiast i think he would refer to himself as is presenting his newest creation the official pitch for the water deep rumble downhill fury soapbox car race he's got the prototype and he's pitching it to the committee anthony I'd like you to tell me about the person making this pitch. Okay. Um, The person making the pitch is just a chicken farmer. Okay. Um, He's he's a chicken farmer. He specifically only has chickens. Um, And therefore his, his car, I'd imagine, I imagine like he, he was like, he was inspired one day because he was with the chickens and collecting eggs. And he, he, you know, he knows not to put all of his eggs in one basket, but he did, he made that mistake. And then he accidentally dropped them. But instead of breaking, they rolled down the hill and he was like, Ooh, what if I connected these to a sort of box and rolled them down a similar hill I can do. Th-. So then he was inspired to, you know, roll things down hills as quickly as he can. And he thought, this is probably a way I can make money if I uh, suckered some other people into, you know, getting together and doing this. And then maybe I could beat them and get money doing it. So Okay. So he invented the wheel? No, no. He just Again? thought he did. Because With he, eggs? Yeah. Oh, it's the superior uh, form of wheel. If you actually... I mean, that's just science. That's math. Really. I really right. like the implication that Alex was just like, so tell me about this random guy. And then Anthony was like, so he's actually the inventor of the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in the middle of this hobby hall in front of this committee, we see a man with beat to hell overalls. Uh, he's wearing like a sun stained shirt and straw hat. He's got like a piece of wheat tucked between his lips. He's holding a chicken. Uh, which does seem stereotypical, but he's into it. And he's uh, gesturing to his soapbox car in front of this committee. And he's saying, well, now that's right. If you look here, some of these safety features are built straight into the automobile so that the pe- the people inside are just as safe as they're ever going to be. And he walks around the car and starts pointing out some of these features that he's installed to make the race more exciting. Garion. Tell me about some of these features that are in this soapbox car that would be exciting in a downhill fury race. Uh, all right, so it has a handful. One um, is a basket of eggs to be used as projectiles. Fantastic. Um, two is the same basket of eggs to be used for snacks. Uh, <laughs> three is the also the same basket of eggs used to fuel the car okay. wait wait hang on a second hey the, the 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 eggs are the fuel of the car you said yeah uh-huh okay all right a finite resource well no that's what the chickens are for it's the nitrous it's... um and then there is also a flamethrower okay so we have a basket of eggs and a flamethrower uh bestie very you... multi-functional basket of eggs by the way Bestie, this uh, this chicken farmer goes around to the other side and starts pointing out some of the uh, what he labels as family friendly offensive devices. Uh, what are some family friendly offensive devices that he has strapped onto this soapbox car? Family friendly and offensive. And strapped on. Now, do you mean I offensive am... like? to offend somebody or offensive like offense and defense that is up to diana in this moment but no i feel too much on the spot i'm too sick for this all right Fa- family friendly it's a just fucking, weapons just what fucking weapons run by fucking shit. this is like the fucking tesla of fucking soapbox cars like like you know what's offensive about it it's it's got uh, an auto driving feature that sometimes just explodes but at least when you die you take your opponents out with you okay all right very good there's an auto drive semi-exploding feature. also the flamethrower i feel like was covered 
Cool, cool. Good energy coming into the spot. Travis. Yes, sir. <clears throat> After I the, showed up. <laughs> after, thanks, thanks, bestie. After the chicken farmer talks about his uh, his chicken basket and his flamethrower and the self-exploding GPS feature, um, there's a member of the uh, committee that stands up, and it's this, like, glasses-wearing small dude with a bag comb over and a clipboard. And he says, um, excuse me, I think due to the safety concerns of the race, I think this car should be excluded. I'm not sure that the self-exploding GPS is a good idea. Dweeb. But the rest of the committee, Travis, fucking loves this car. And I would love you to tell me why the rest of the committee casually throws the safety guy under the bus. Bootlickers, all of them. I imagine, first of all, they all probably have some money on the race already okay they're all sure, going to be sure. gambling and i would also assume that they are making money off of the explosives that are being used in the car and so this is just a giant money grab for the committee anyway they don't care about the actual racers or their safety they're just in it for profit okay um really quick for bonus points can you tell me who the number one seed is in the water deep rumble downhill fury race Travis, sorry, I'm, I was I was I was still with Travis. Get out of here, get out. Oh, uh, uh, since I listened totally listened to last episode, since it's not, out, hey, Travis, I'm it, gonna be real. None of this was in last episode, my guy. Oh, perfect, <laughs> got it. Um, it's gonna be um, some some dragonborn. I don't know why, but he's uh, he's the number one seed. That's okay. as far as I've got. I got it. Nope, I love it. His name uh, is Mario. <laughs> it's uh. All right, so there is a dragonborn. Go Bowser. Number... <laughs> He's dragonborn. Bowser the dragon is the number one seed. Okay. So we've got uh, we've got a car. There's a there's a basket of eggs. There's a flamethrower. There's a self exploding GPS driving feature. And the number one seed is a dragonborn. We can work with this. Okay, perfect. Let's cut to you, Bing Bongs. Gareth, you are strapped onto a dead rat the size of a donkey. And I think actually as you're struggling with if you're here, if you're there, Gareth, you can still feel this rat growing. Like the enlarged spell is still on it. So like it's sprinting with you attached to it. And you hear screams and people throwing themselves out of the way and boxes breaking as this thing like careens clearly through a crowd. And but you hear like the pop of soft like bone sockets and flesh squelching as this rat grows bigger. Normal. Okay, so before we like get into it, can we iron out the whole splitting in two thing? I don't think so. No, I'm, I'm gonna have more fun with that like as we go. Word. Um Arnold and Mel, I'm going to have you sort sort of start up. The, I'm going to assume you just went up the stairs chasing after uh, this dead rat and the Stone of Galore. We're going to leave Ronnie's character behind you. She's going to maybe come back one day because I had a lot of fun with her and she's uh, fantastic. But as she's not here, I don't really feel comfortable uh, piloting her meat puppet without her uh, here for it. So you guys are going to jump out onto the street to a very curious scene the sides of this street it's a it's a you're at the top of a hill looking down into the i think like the southern end of the trades ward into the sea is everything okay over there are you guys yeah. all right you can't say me puppet <laughs> why not <laughs> because then diana makes a face and i can't i'm just gonna watch it happen and it's a slow motion explosion of hilarity <laughs> and... slow motion explosion uh, you're looking at a downhill street that uh, is actually quite steep and cobbled as it curves down into the sea ward, and you see like the harbor and the the sea wall of Waterdeep. But what's curious about this is the sides of this street have been lined with big hay bales, and there are crowds lining the hay bales on the on the outside, peering in and milling around, and there are. Uh, I mean, you smell like roasting meat, and there are people selling ale. And at the front of this uh, street, sort of at the top of the hill, is a large crowd of people uh, standing in the street, milling underneath a big banner. Garion, you hear screams and commotion, and 
Make a constitution saving throw for me, Gary. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. I'm not stalling. <laughs> Hold on. Constitution, yeah. Constitution, huh? We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Ooh, six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have one hand wrapped around like the leather thong of this of this necklace that this rat had. Diana, I swear to Christ, we have like an hour and a half of content to get through. Can you just like button your shit up? Anyway, Gareth's holding a G-string in one hand, and on the other <laughs> end of this G-string is the stone of galore, which is hanging from this rat's mouth. Um <clears throat> Gareth, you feel your legs and feet like slam against the cobblestones as this rat grows and drags you with it. And you, I think you get the impression of motion as it is barreling through obviously some kind of crowd. But you are very busy because you have the clear sensation of a pair of burning hands grabbing one of your arms and like pressing into your skin. And you feel their hands like burning into your skin. And you're going to take... Five points of damage. Now, I will say that we're going to reset hit points because I have been intentionally for the narrative keeping you guys moving from storyline to storyline. So let's reset hit points. Take five off your total. Diana, I'd love you to track your hit points for once in your life. And not going to happen, Dusty. We're going to go from there. Diana and Anthony, you see on this banner in big, huge, jagged letters, water deep rumble, colon, downhill fury and you see 25 to 30 soapbox cars lined up in starting formations each of them has uh one or two racers in them there is i mean for all intents and purposes this race is about to start there's like a gnome at the front standing on a podium with like a fantasy flare gun pointed into the air and everybody's like sort of hunched over their wheels and the air is sort of like expectant, except that everybody is staring at two broken cars, a scattered hay bale, and the rapidly receding form of a donkey to horse sized dead rat with what appears to be your rogue strapped to it as it takes off sprinting down this raceway. Turn it around, Garrett. See if you can win. I, it kind of seems like I am winning. And, uh, you hear the gnome whisper to somebody and then another official who's wearing like an NFL referee uh, jersey and hat sort of shrugs. And then the gnome fires his flare gun. I, I thought I thought somebody was going to first one to catch that rat wins. <laughs> no way, man. Nothing stops water deep rumble downhill theory. <clears throat> um, so my question to you, Mel and Arnold, is which soapbox car do you guys take to chase after your dead rat and uh, associated companion? There are a number on the start line. There's uh, most of them look fairly similar, although some of them are quite kitted out. Clearly this is like a hobby race where people can either kind of buy a stock car or build a custom one. There are a number of them in the back where people who weren't sort of uh, expecting to start the race just yet have left unoccupied. A couple of them stand out. There's one that is built and shaped exactly like a fox, complete with like a fake red fur skin and like glowing eyes in the front. There's one um, that looks like it's got like a sea theme. There's like harpoon tridents in the front and scales on the back. And there's like an effervescence floating off the wheels. And then there's one with what appears to be a massive giant in it, uh, sort of squeezed into the confines of this soapbox car. Actually, Mel just screams, first one to catch that dead rat wins. You hear several rat people. Is very much alive. That living dead rat. Picky, picky. <laughs> I'm trying to, to increase be your rat. odds of getting caught here if everyone's going after you. You it's hear like an electric whisper rush through this uh, racer ship and several people like press buttons and pull levers and uh, touch glyphs and at least 10 of these cars explode into clouds of smoke and bits of like arcane fire and the mermaid or the, the sea car like explodes in like a trail of like seawater and bubbles and takes off down this hill. 
And Mel's just like, look, Arnold, we don't got to do shit. I'm sorry. That might be Diana. I'm real cranky. I'm real sick. My, oh, wow. We are really bringing a crosswise energy. It's cool. It's cool. I'm into it. Uh, you know what? I can fix it. I can fix it. Joshua Patrick goes up to, I think he's, he's sniffling. He's snuffling around um, because he smells something. And you see him, Mel, in a fit of horror, leap into a car that is about to take off down the hill. That's cold. Travis, how do you start your car? What's what's your what's your car start? Um, well, I have to gas it up, and that includes basically an entire barrel of ale. Okay. And so that's what when you guys first came out on the street, that's what I was doing. I was just emptying this barrel of ale into the car and in, yeah everyone's most people are doing it uh in order to actually get it started though i am belching at okay. the loudest possible volume i can and for whatever reason that just kind of gets things going and then i'm to really kind of give it a little extra juice i'm fred flintstoning it a little bit okay just my feet come out underneath and just and that gives me the uh, that little extra boost to get off the line. Okay, perfect. Um, you hear a uh, a sniffling, snuffling sound, and you, I think, just as you're Fred Flintstoning to like get that jump across the start line, you see a charcoal black wolf pup, maybe like just past pupperhood and into like adolescent wolfhood, uh, with bottle green eyes, hop into your car. As you start to take off, probably likes a car ride. Most dogs do. It's like hanging his head out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. I think you've got like a little dog sized like porthole for him. Still it, you know. Like, like, I mean, if he's having a good time, then Mel's as long as there's like extra slobber coming, just like hanging out and just oh, sure. going oh, down like the window. Ob- extra obstacle for the people behind you. Exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, I bet they didn't have windshield wipers. I mean, <laughs> like JP will throw the turtle shells for you, whatever you need. That's all let's, we need. Uh, let's take this opportunity. Travis, can you please describe your character to Mel and Arnold? Because they would absolutely be paying attention to him as the wolf pup jumped I'm into the I'm a little car. busy. Yeah. So you see a seven to eight foot pale skin, bald Goliath. He's got broad shoulders, but he's very slender for uh, the average Goliath. He wears... Loose-fitting, basic brown and tan clothes to let him move very swiftly, but also just to hide his massive beer gut. Um, His arms and his back are adorned with, like, one-off tattoos, almost. Like, there's no pattern to them. They're just, like, there's no thought. But for whatever reason, if you see it in the right light, they, like, grow a really obnoxious, like, bar neon sign type color. And uh, that's... uh, Milar Lite. That was is, uh, way too good. Sorry. I, I spent a lot of time on it. Travis. 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 <laughs> Miller Lite. Say your say your character's name again. Milar Lite. We can't get oh. sued for that, can we? <laughs> oh. I, so. I should have I should have prefaced that with please do a bad job because that was so good it was insulting Sorry. to the rest of us. It's fine. He is a clumsy Goliath. I love it. That's about it. Okay. Oh, it's Arnold me, David. Ar- Arnold and Mel. <laughs> so is he he's he just zooms past us. We don't get a chance to like interact, right? Yeah, I think Josh Pat hops in the back of his of yeah, his soap car going. and he takes off down the hill. Okay. That's okay. Sucks. Okay. So I say we have to go get Josh Pat. And then I you know, we look uh Okay, so he had to dump a bunch of ale into the cars, right? He can did. I t- right. Can I tell which of the cars is already ready to, like, just go? Yes. So of the cars on the back line, most of them are, are quote-unquote, gassed up. One right. of them has an ale barrel similar to the one that Goliath dumped in his car. Um, one of them has a uh, what appears to be a small child's drum that is spouting bubbles. And then there's another one that has three lit Roman candles that are firing off, like, tiny flares next to it. Cool. Hmm. I see. Okay. Um, Diana, do you have a preference for which car we jump into? No. Okay. Um, I'm long, just based at some point there. I'm on so much cold medicine and I'm drinking. How? My liver's crying. Just pick one. I trust okay. you. 
how how heavy do you think that uh that no okay so there's the barrel there's all right let's just jump into the one with the fireworks with the 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 roman candles or whatever perfect we're, we're, okay yeah. you hop into the car with that's roman candles choice. next to it that's one that could kill us and finally i can realize my dream i'm doing it for you <clears throat> thank you the anthony, anthony or uh Anthony, as Arnold the Bard, you are looking at a dashboard of glowing red sigils that are laced with living fireworks. You can see bursts of crimson and gold and ruby red as the dashboard literally glows with like arcane power. There is a small basket of chicken's eggs tucked underneath it where it's not going to break. And there's a big red button with a rocket emblem in the middle. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, okay. Mel, as you hop in the back, really quick, Arnold, as you hop in the back, there are three bottle rockets strapped to one side that are unlit. And there is also a pedal on the back that's sort of like set near the opening of this of this soapbox car that has uh, a big red like triangle warning sign on it. And if you look in the glove box, there's a gun. Arnold. So I was going to ask, you said that there are uh, bottle rockets or is that what you said? Roman candles yep. or bottle rockets or something right next to it, right? There are bottle rockets inside the car. There are Roman candles next to the car. That's what I thought. Okay. I just want to grab the Roman candles. Mm, I've worked in them. the ED enough to know that as many fingers as we went into this with is not as many fingers as we coming out. We're going to have twice as many. We're going to work together to gather. <laughs> We're going to get more fingers. <laughs> We're going to yeah. collect all the fingers we can I find. I like this. We can use the basket. Going it's on a on very a versatile basket. <laughs> New. So Campaign. The real... Fuck you, bestie. We're collecting fingers now. Collecting fingers the now. real treasure are the fingers we found along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Episode title. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, okay. I have a question. Though. Looking around this thing uh, before we get started, do I see any kind of like lighter or anything I can use to ignite anything? Yes, there is a uh, like a flint and steel built into a contraption so that you could like pull a lever and it will. You you have a feeling that it will automatically spark. Okay, cool. Um, so I was just like a Tesla. That's right. So, so we get in there and we get, you know, we, we get into our auto, you know, sparking Tesla situation. Mm-hmm. Or I do. Like, I don't know if Mel comes with me. I mean, yes. <laughs> oh, my thank God. God. We, we wouldn't want you to not step into the bit. I have been in the bit is the delight. I mean, to be fair, your first action was to try and delegate it to NPCs. (laughs) Because it it was your idea and it was funny because like how fast Alex was like, no, no, it's this other thing. And then like immediately I was like, no, it'd be real funny if it was that thing. Well, then in that case, I try my best. See, I really am just the greatest. Agree. We know. So what happens when I like so Arnold would just like once we're in like comfortably, I want to pull the lever like just to take off. Uh, comfortably, lever, right? I like to think that we like it settled. We got like our cozy blanket or cocoa. Blankets. Cocoa. Yeah, he said we're getting comfy. All right, all right. Anthony, you hop in the into this soapbox car and you get set. <clears throat> your heart is pounding. You know that your best friend in the world, Garrett is strapped to a living dead rat growing larger right. by the second and the world powerful stone of galore is clutched in its jaws and you and my hand and in Gareth's hand and you get set and you you grab this lever and you turn to see Mel pulling blankets out of a side chest and pouring herself hot cocoa that she's summoned out of thin air because yes and is a rule I have to abide by legally dude I keep telling you it's not if it's stupid you can <laughs> ignore <laughs> <laughs> no, if he leaned into that Lucky Charms bit, he can uh, lean into me true. having blankets and cocoa bit. and be so cozy like, before I die. So Arnold is just like shaking, but he casts Mage Hand to go help Mel, just like like do the things, you know, whatever she's yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Like tuck me in. That's yeah, you yeah, tuck, tuck, tuck the Rage, rage Hand in. is like just reluctantly. He put some marshmallows in her fucking cocoa. I, it's like the the mage hand is like holding the hot chocolate, but like gyroscopically, so it doesn't like spill with the movement of the car. Right. Yeah. I think that's sometimes the I think Anthony's the only on one show. that loves me here. I can't even spell gyroscopically. I don't think anybody Would you like can. to ask Siri. Uh, Arnold, you pull this lever, and the car literally ignites with a with a matchstick rumble. There's Finally, the smart strike of sulfur. And all you, it's all you can do to grab onto the two joysticks that you uh, you see on the sides that pilot it like a like a Top Gun plane, as the two of you go hurtling down this hill. 
Let's start with Gareth at the front, attached to the rat. Winning the race. Winning the race. There are a pair of hands burning you, grabbing onto your upper bicep, and you turn, and I think you're still trapped in this, in this current world and also between planes space where you see this dead rat and you see the pustules growing along its fur and the holes in its hide where you can see its rotten bones and and sickly gray meat flesh but you also see the black and white area of the between plane space where you see a pair of hands grabbing your arm and you see the curled form of the burnt out geophilump grabbing you it's it's the fucking worst name of all time gary can amazing. i be real the best such a good name. such a good name like Dude. i've got this dramatic scene that's super cool and then i, I have to say geophil up and ruin i love it. that you're like trying to be all gross and horary because you know i'm gonna make a face because i can't control myself and then just geophil lump comes and just cuts it off at the pass I god mean, it's i i could have named him bubbles and it wouldn't even have been as bad no you see Geophilump curled around your side, pulling at your arm, trying to like pull you off this rat. And you can actually feel the physical presence of him like trying to pull you down as he tries to like insert himself into the real world. So my question to you, Gareth, is which threat do you go with first? Do you firm up your grip on the rat or do you deal with Geophilump? Uh, I think I absolutely firm up my grip. Although, cause like, he's holding on to which arm is he holding on to? The one that's like held on to the the stone or the other one that's kind of loose? I think the one that's loose and I think he's you you catch like the the curled filmy silhouette of his shoulders and upper arms as he's like using your loose hand to pull himself into the real world and you see the faint hint of color spark into his eyes and you remember they're like a startling blue. Word, word. Excellent. Word. Uh yeah, I definitely firm up on the stone. Okay, how? And I think I just ignore him. Okay, all right. Uh, how do you firm up? Do you, you just like choke up on the? It's like this, this, this G string is sort of like wrapped around your wrist. So like, how do you firm up on it? I think uh, when I firm up on it, I do it real mentally. Like I really focus on the task. Like. I, I feel like Geophilump is trying to distract me, and I'm not gonna let him do that. I'm okay. really focused on this G string. Okay, so like a like a little kid at T-ball when your coach tells you to choke up on the bat, you're really bringing all your mental. Diana, are you okay? Better than she was. I mean, let's be honest. Let's just look at this. <laughs> like you a did. little like a little kid at T-ball, you choke <laughs> up on the bat, and you feel like you've got a better grip on this leather thong. From choking uh, the bat. My my lar. Am I saying that right? Mylar? Uh, it's Milar. Milar, excuse me. That's on me. You it's okay. are, I think you're like in the top half of this pack. You're probably like 10th place as you hurtle down this cobblestone lane. That's, I mean, it's a steep downhill. And right. you have a wolf pup that you don't know in the back of your, in the back of your soapbox car. But he's having the time of his life. Josh Pat mm -hmm. is having the absolute time of his life. You can actually hear like a wet slapping as he's hanging his head off the side of your car and it's his cheek meat sort of like flapping against his <laughs> teeth, which is a phrase I didn't think I was gonna say today, but here we are. <laughs> My question to you, uh, Travis as Milar is, what do you do to overtake the car ahead of you? Which you can see is it's two kids. They can't be older than 12. Uh, They've got goblin masks pulled over their face, complete with like sharpened green ears. And one of them is holding uh, two sticks, like play swords as he faces off behind you and waves them at your face. Hello. Oh my God, is it Dustin Ego and the, the fucking child? Okay, kill Evan. Dustin was all right, I guess. Well, so at this point in the race, I'm probably not, I know it's a fast race, but I'll get progressively more drunk as Correct. the race goes on. I think so, there's like an open spout on your car that's just like spewing yeah. ale into the air. You're catching Absolutely. Your mouth. Oh, I kind of pictured like a Camelback situation where he's just like <laughs> tapped in. So I think I'm going to like actually use some of the stuff that the car has at this point because I'm a little bit there. Yeah. And I have just, 
I installed a rune that when I push it, it just lets off this crazy dragon roar okay. and just scares the shit out of these little kids. And hopefully they're just going to, you know, swerve off into some, nice. some hay bales. All right. I love it. So you press this button and the front of your car, which I'm now seeing is like fashioned as two ale. It's like one ale keg, but you've cleverly had a hinge design so that it actually splits open. And then this ale keg like roars yeah. in, a, in a lion scream. But the doors are just cardboard. No, you know, for sure, for sure. Boxes, like, clearly yeah. effort's been yeah. put into one part of the car. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, roll a... Do you have your character sheet pulled up, Travis? I do. Okay. Roll a... Oh, let's call it a charisma roll. Charisma. Yeah, add, roll a d20 and add, just add your charisma bonus to it. I have a plus zero to charisma, so... Could be worse. Could be worse. No riz. I got a seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the front of your car opens and like a dying squirrel scream comes out of the front of your car because it's not warmed up properly. Uh, and it sounds like what, Garrett? Ah! Which is pretty terrifying. Um, you see what the, the goblin youth standing in the back laugh, like clutch his belly and laugh at you. And then he uh, smacks his sticks together and a plume of black smoke lit with uh, sparks explodes from the back of this car and obscures uh, the entire street in front of you. And I would you like to make inked, bro. I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw, please, Travis. If you need any more foley work, let me know. That is a natural twenty. Wow, you are really for a total. Hitting the ups and downs of the spectrum here. Okay. For a for a twenty three, if that matters. All right. So beside you, this this smoke like obscures the entire street, not just your car. Uh, beside you, you hear like a high pitched slam as two soapbox cars two soapbox cars collide. There's the voices of like alarms and screaming, but you almost like using your instincts that you don't even need to see. You weave through the invisible traffic and collisions and your soapbox car breaks through this cloud and you look behind you to see four other cars piled up as other cars are sort of like slamming into them. But you are, you have now cut the field down to maybe you're like in the top five. I'm, I'm pulling a uh, we'll call it a Lightning McQueen because I have a three-year-old and there's a car that's upside down. I'm you lifting the car the up, bouncing off the wheels and, and clearing the rest of the field. Yes. Except for the, you know, the cars that were already ahead. Yeah, you see the shadowy like silhouette of something definite and you, you pull another like lever in your soapbox car and it launches up on these like sick hydraulics that you've had installed in the bottom yeah. and then bounces off the wheels of another car. And then with a hard slam, you, the car and Joshua Patrick, the wolf pup, uh, hit the road and like fishtail a little bit, but then you get control and continue to like scream down this street. Go. Arnold and Mel you see ahead of you some distance ahead of you because you're at the back of the pack you see a plume of black smoke you see three cars slam into each other as the as the drivers like lose control and then you see rising out of the smoke like an angel ascending to heaven milar light with joshua patrick in the back like rise out of the smoke and you see like joshua patrick turn back and like wink at you mel as he and this like giant, easy. like, yeah, yeah, in front of the, like, the full easy moon. in front of the moon. Yes. And then this car slams into the into the street ahead of it. So you know Josh Patrick is safe. Right. How do the two of you navigate this ob obstacle? Um, can I see enough through the plume of smoke to to navigate, or do I have to do something to obfuscate? Or uh, I think you have to do something to deal with the smoke because it's like mitigated very somehow. Thick. Okay. Um, I don't have any spells or anything that would help the that, but I I guess I could. I can create more smoke. I could light one of the. I could. I mean, listen. We can create lights. I, unless Diana, do you have any? We could like drop a giant whale in front of everyone. If only uh, I, yeah. my character starts crying, just remembering uh, Tess, just just hey, immediately rip, knowing. Rip Tess tickles. Way to bring it up when the wound is still fresh, Mel. Oof. Um. Okay. So. I don't have anything. Okay. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna just just because I have nothing else I can do as Except far as spells. That... Or anything. I'm going to. What do you have? Something? No, it's just the. Can't we 
be when it's dark? I can or... see when it's dark, but not when it's smoky. I don't know if how that's going, you know. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to throw it out there because I have no other ideas for the smoke in particular. So I'm just going to say I light one of the Roman candles and point it forward as like a light. Like kind of okay. like hoping the like light a would- Like a beacon. Like a beacon that would show us if anything's in front of us so we can dodge or what. All right, I, I actually like this. Is like Arnold, you've got like one hand on a joystick, and then you've got a lit Roman candle held in front yes. of you. You're careening through the smoke. Make a dexterity saving throw, please. I got a 19. Oh shit. Okay, yeah. Uh, you see these car wrecks lit by the light of this Roman candle ahead of you, just in time to like jerk your jerk your jerk your joystick. Sorry. Hey, you're what right. Bad, That's exactly what a what bad what a bad word to stumble on. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You so anyway, the... Arnold was jerking his joystick. <laughs> you jerk your joystick and swerve your car around these wrecks. And after what feels like several minutes, but it's probably only like 10 seconds or so, you burst through the smoke. Yes. And you see maybe like seven cars ahead of you. One of them is this like pale-skinned uh, Goliath with Joshua Patrick in the back of his car. There's uh, six other cars. And then in the distance, I think you see... Uh, this dead rat with Gareth attached to his side neck situation. It is at this point, Arnold, that you hear a deep set roll of thunder and white lightning forks the sky and it starts to rain because it is a cold spring day. And your car starts to slow a little bit. Uh, at the front, Gareth. Yeah. You have successfully uh, pulled yourself into this world and not geophilum's world you've choked up on uh this this leather string and you feel like you've got a you've got a handle on the moment so how would you like to proceed in this moment uh so i think a clarify a clarifying question is you said that was like torn in half right yeah so the half of me is here attached to the rat where's where's the other half I think there is a part of you that is in the space between planes that Geophilump is using as essentially a ticket to ride and is pulling himself into this world. How big is the rat now? The rat is about the size of a draft horse. Can I... So you know how I picked up that like weird chain knife from that guy? Yeah, the, spinning, the, the spinning blades. Can I try to like stab that into the rat and use it as like reins on a horse yes right now you are sort of dangling from its mouth i will say to do that efficiently i would recommend getting on top of or like adjusting your balance because from where you are you're only going to get about half the half the rat yeah because I, I i imagine i have my left hand like on the stone in yeah. its jowls, yeah. and then I would like use the other hand to like hook it into its shoulder or something. So I could all right. Oh, like... so you're gonna okay? Yeah, I can see that. You so you're gonna go up and sort of like stab down. Yeah, I'm into that. Roll a dexterity attack with disadvantage, please. Disadvantage? Why would you say that to me? Because I'm the worst. Uh, okay, the first roll is a... oh Jesus Christ! It was a fucking eighteen plus three is twenty one. That's, That's really pretty good. good. That's really good. The second one though is a 13 plus 3 is 16, which is still not bad. All right, still pretty good. So you lunge up to, like, stab this this giant growing rat in the spinal cord or, like, towards the shoulder blades where you know there's, like, some important nerves there. And you feel those burning hands pull your arm back, like, attempting to, like, stop you from doing this, essentially. But, but like, I'm way too strong. You're way too buff. <laughs> you're way too ripped. And you stab this rat in the meat of the shoulder blades, and you hear it squeal around the muffled gemstone ball gag. Oh, will you squeal? Stuffed in it. Who? Whoever Here, I, I can do the squeal. Go ahead, Gareth, please. Thank Horrifying. You. Literal goosebumps. God, I should do this professionally. And um, you feel like you've got a good handle on how like how this rat moves because you can feel its muscle tendon writhing against the bottom of this knife. Milar, you are screaming down this hill, jumping up the pack. 
you feel really good about it. Your uh, your your burst of speed through the through the smoke really propelled you forward. The pack behind you is falling behind you, and you've got a wolf pup hanging out the back, really amping up the vibes in your car. So it's kind of going Best aces for us. I mean, it's going well until there is a explosion of noise and movement on the right side of this street as the hay bales uh, separating the street from like the side streets throw get thrown into the air and a carriage with a team of horses in the front careens into the street hitting some of these soapbox cars and like one or two of them like slam into each other and the the sea themed one with the harpoons like uh lets out a burst of bubbles as it like drifts and tries to catch its uh catch its balance as it has it fishtails <laughs> and uh milar you see that there is an actual carriage theft happening on this carriage like there are two bandits on the back dressed in black with daggers and short swords uh trying to like tear their way into this carriage uh and get inside of it and the driver at the front has a wand in one hand that he's pointing over the back and he is casting magic missile without looking to try to knock them off the off the back of the carriage but he is actually casting it at you behind him oh less badass so my question to you, Milar, is how do you how do you handle the carriage theft scenario? Well, so I just ha- I happen to have as a reaction deflect ma- missiles, no which shit, might, really? yeah, okay, as my monk ability to be able to just get that shit out of here. So I think that's valid. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. And you know, <laughs> that's so unbelievably convenient. The yeah. next time Alex is like Gareth. <laughs> You're about to get squished <laughs> by a hammer. I'm just gonna be like, well, luckily for me, I have the skill anti hammers. <laughs> I'll literally, I'll send you a screenshot with the date and time on it. Oh no, so I'm not I saying I'm not it was a hammer joke, Diana. Deal with it. <laughs> deal with God it. Damn I said it, Diana. I know I it was. I was it. laughing I said it. at it. No one cares. It's fine. I. And that's I'm, why I was laughing. It was good. And fine. I'm. Uh, so I'm struggling to determine if I care more about actually winning or like helping people. I'm like, oh, boy, if I had a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. For sure. So I think with this pup behind me, I've got like maybe a renewed sense of, hey, maybe I should try to help some people. So I'm going to try to just get to the side. Or actually, I take that back. I'm just going to reach back and give uh, J. Pat some scratches and take some of the saliva, yeah, put it yeah. on some eggs, and just launch them in front of the horses and try to get them to slip up on it. Okay. I see. Do you I have to careen? Do you have to roll for def- uh, deflect missile, or does it just happen? It's, uh, I mean, all it says here is range 20 feet. It's it's a hit DC of plus six. It's a hit so, DC. I don't know. Does that mean you roll for it or I roll for it? Hang on, let me look it up. I guess I roll from it. I, I probably roll for it. The I, add six. I go Smoke. pee while we're doing this. Yeah, you know what? Let's actually take a pee break <laughs> and then we'll come back. Okay. What's going on? We made it to the mid roll. Welcome. As a, a new trend that I'm trying, I'm bringing some character work into the mid rolls. So today's mid roll is going to be done by a frat brother. What's up, dude? Welcome. Sit down, chill out. I'm Alexander James, your dungeon master and all around bro buddy, here to talk about to you about some cool shenanigans that we got going on. Check it. We are as huge playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist. It's an official, bleh, boring Dungeons and Dragons licensed module written by Chris Perkins, Scott Fitzgerald Gray, Kim Mohan, and Michelle Carter. Um, if you or any of your fellow brothers or sisters or letter pals would like to get into D&D, I recommend you go to dnd.wizards.com. They got great stuff there for you, bro. They've got beer mugs. They've got shot glasses. They've got uh, whiskey tumblers. They've got all manner of like drinking accessories and you can get them you can get them just sent right to your door it's the coolest thing man dnd.wizards.com check it out if you want to be a character on this show critically stupid go to twitter tag us in a post 
hey, at Crit Stupid, your jokes are so gut-bustingly funny. Or tag us on a post on TikTok and be like, hey, what's up, TikTok? Today I'm talking about Critically Stupid. Ah, they're so funny. Do that stuff, and then you could end up as a character on this show. And then Alex, the DM, he's gonna make you. He's gonna make a character with your name, and then they'll do stuff, and it'll be funny. Maybe he's not very funny, but it, your character could be funny. But that's you, not him. These ding dongs, these guys right here, doing that big YouTube subscription push, trying to get to that magic number of one thousand subscribers, and that's like not a lot. I got more. I got more brothers than that in my fraternity. Omega, beta, beta. Uh, but these guys are still trying to reach a thousand Pfft, sucks for them. Uh, so if you haven't yet subscribe to their channel, they do funny stuff, not Alex, the rest of them, uh, share the channel with one of your brothers or sisters, your letter pals, and, you know, let them know and be like, Hey guys, this is the perfect backdrop for, uh, date rape Saturdays and they're going to love it. Really, like it's it's just funny enough that people aren't gonna notice you <laughs> slipping powder into that beverage and they're gonna, uh, they're gonna laugh and it's gonna be great. Uh, last week, these these ding dongs had an amazing guest on the show. Her name was Ronnie, and her handle is at Chibi Tweets. I'm, I'm gonna have Alex put it up here on the screen uh, for you watching on YouTube. She was amazing. She had a great time on the show. These guys loved having her. Hopefully that we can we hopefully we can bring her back because her character was so much fun. And yeah, JJ out. Hold on, I'm chewing. Oh no, we wouldn't want we wouldn't show. want we wouldn't want the audio to be compromised, would we? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the I muted Sponsored it when I opened Libra my shit back. Where Diana is gonna chew the entire time. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us to your Libra Sarcana ad. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to it audio only, this is probably just an ad. And I regret to inform you that you're not looking at our beautiful faces as well as these beautiful dice. Uh Anthony, can you tell me about a time that uh, the Libra Arcana dice saved the world? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there was that one time when, you know, we, we all know that, you know, someone's, I don't want to name names. We all know who was about to hit the nuke button. They were going to, they had all the keys turned, all the buttons. Everyone's about to hit, you know, um, uh, he was about to push the button. And what he didn't realize was someone had dropped foolishly and just depressingly for the ruining their entire life, but saving all of ours, their Libra Sarcana dice um, die on the ground. They slipped on that sweet D20, uh, their finger missing the button and crushing all of their, you know, their bones in their hand, making them unable to push the, you know, nuke button and sa thus saving the world. I'm all for it. This world is sure terrible. You, you know what doesn't suck, though? Libra Sarcana dice. They are a bright spot in our otherwise very shitty, shitty world. Listen, if you suffer from clinical depression like my main <laughs> girl, Dan, <laughs> then you need to get yourself some Libra Sarcana dice. I'm going to hold mine up to the camera so you can see. Like, these dice legit are very pretty. This is the uh, this is the mint julep set. My man, Garion, is rocking the, uh, what is that, ancient iron, Garion? You got them right. Garion loves it looks the, like the a feel Skyrim of was a dice. Yeah. Ooh, Bessie's got the, what is that, Cerulean Haze? I believe so, yes. I don't always remember the names, but it is one of my favorites because it kind of just looks like a little winter scene in there. It's really pretty. It's really, really pretty and um, legible, which is nice because my other dice, not so much. Yeah. It always sucks when you get it, when you get a really nice, like, die and you're excited about it, and then the color scheme of the numbers matches the resin behind it, and then you have to squint to read it. Libra Arcana dice don't have that problem. The the artists who make these really think about the color schemes, and, like, the die is cast with a really pretty, interesting color set, but then the numbers also in that set are just contrasted enough so that when you roll them, they're super easy to read, they're really pretty, and there are new dice sets every month that drop regularly. So if you go to LibrasArcana.com, use our exclusive discount code STUPID20, you can get 20% off anything on the site. That's a monthly subscription for one of these really rad uh, dice sets. You can get a one-time dice set, or you can check out some of their cool D&D uh, &D book leather covers. I've got a set on my player's handbook actually right up there, and it's super useful, especially if you're a dm on the go keep those books clean i mean i know how much money you spent on them why not protect them and yeah check out these super awesome libris arcana sets there's a new one every month and you can check them out at librisarcana.com use our exclusive discount code stupid 20 for 20 percent off your final purchase anything on the site libris arcana dice for life do it or you're dead to me 
do it or Diana hates your plot and guts. Okay, so uh, what's going on, dear listener? We're back. We've peed. Everybody's got a fresh beverage. Everybody's refreshed. We got we got a sneak hint peek at Travis's dog, and she's fucking adorable, and you wish you could have seen her. Um, and I'm going to come back and say, Travis, I actually looked at deflect missiles. too. So you have the opportunity to catch one of these magic missiles if you would like to and throw it back at the carriage. That's fucking sweet. Yes. I want to do that, but I don't know what I have to do. In or- I don't know what I have to roll to, to catch it. So starting at third I was level, trying to look that up. you can use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile when you are hit by. So I'm going to make a roll to hit you. And I'm literally going to roll a four, which is super cool for me. Uh, <laughs> so you can catch it as the ability. Yep. Uh, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus your dex mod plus your monk level. So roll a d10. Uh, and your monk level is five. Is that what we agreed on? Correct. All right. So, so add... I rolled a nine plus five, so 14. And then what's your dex mod? Uh, dexterity is plus three. Okay, so you're going to take minus 12 points of damage. So you <laughs> catch this. Damn. I'm <laughs> healed 12. <laughs> you catch I'm this sober. Magic missile and oh, it's this like is inc- a, incredible. It's, it's like a hit off a of John. You feel fucking il- like enlivened. <sighs> and uh, for four hours what do you wa- or more. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? Do you want to throw it back or do you want to throw it to the side? You now are holding a. Do you want to throw it back? A living pulse of well, you can throw it at the carriage, or you can throw it at one of your competitors. So that was what I was thinking. If it's, if it's, um, if it's still part of my reaction and not an action in a sense, I would like to, um, yeah, I want to throw it back at the carriage. I want to just take it out. That's going to cost you one key point, so you're going to have to keep track of that. I got a yeah, I got that. Okay. Even if you and then I just roll. It's fine. No, I got it. Um, and then it's, I, I think I still just roll damage or you make the attack with proficiency. So you're going to roll, uh, for your spell attack, and then you're going to add your proficiency bonus to it, which I believe is three for fifth level. Right. That is a four plus three. So seven. Okay. (laughs) I'm Uh, all over the map. You caught it. Like, like you were fielding a fastball into like outer field. However, you threw it like the designated hitter after they'd been drinking at the at the bar for several hours. So I think you, you ping it off a cobblestone and it slams into the wheel of this carriage and offsets the okay. balance a little bit. Okay. And, and then go ahead. for my action, I want to do what I was talking about earlier where I take a couple, a handful of bags, mm-hmm. get some of J-Pat's slobber on it and just huck it in front of the carriage hoping that they will banana peel and, you know, yeah, so, you, off of so you sort of like hook hook Josh Pat's mouth and sort of like get a good finger full of slobber. I don't think I need to because he's like head out the window and just it's just slobbering slobber trail. Yeah, it's like oh, I you hold the egg and sort of. Like... I just hold it behind his head. It's already coming out, and then I just launch it. All right, all right so I'm not. Right. I don't even have to do that part. I Make have it. to ask if I, I I imagine the eggs would break on co- impact with the ground. So I imagine the slobber from J Pat is the equivalent of having a cute girl blow on the dice before you roll at a, a Vegas table. This the slobber's like the slobber's the slippery element, and the egg is the vessel to get it because you can't throw a slobber. So the egg is what I'm using as the projectile. The slobber is the actual. I get it. Mechanism. I'm with, I guess. I'm, I'm with it. And yeah. and the yolk mixing in should make it exactly. very I'm yeah. with it. And I uh, souffle. Travis, make a dexterity attack for me, please. So plus three, just D twenty plus three. That's the one. Uh that would be a thirteen total. Thirteen total. You uh, huck this freshly slobbered egg and it lands in front of one of these horses that are on the team of this carriage, sort of like careening down the street. And with a high-pitched scream, Gareth, can you give me a horse high-pitched scream, please? (laughs) (laughs) One of these horses collapses. Now, dear listener, fret not, no harm will befall these horses. They're like Pokemon. If they take damage, they're just going to be knocked out. They will not be harmed. No horses were, yeah. were harmed in the production of this episode of Critically Stupid. That's not true. I'm going to go out and harm a horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of these horses slips and drags the whole team down with it. And 
Travis, you see, or Milar, I should say, you see this carriage sort of like slam into the hay wall and dramatically slow to the point where you race past it into the clear. Yep. Arnold and Mel in your fireworks car at the back. Uh, you have successfully passed the black cloud plume of smoke. Um, ahead of you, you see this pale giant with Josh Pat on the back of his car handily deal with a uh, carriage that appears to have um, taken a wrong turn and entered this race. You're not, you didn't see it enter, but you're pretty sure that's what happened. However, you hear a bored out diesel engine gunning behind you and you turn to see two overall clad black mustachioed Italian plumbers race past you on soapbox cars and one of them uh, he's wearing sort of like a red shirt with like a red cap uh, reaches into his car and pulls out a blue turtle shell and drops it on the ground in front of your soapbox car. Hey, Alex, well, do you it's know... only one after Gareth, so I'm not. Yeah, gonna... do you know how the rules of how Blue Turtle Shell works in Mario? Um, yeah. So, Arnold, I would love you to tell me. Uh, are you googling of, it right now? So what I, you I, would do? Are you? So, go- so you said uh, Arnold, are you googling it? Arnold, who is a big fan. Hold on, Arnold. The... I hate to interrupt you, but uh, everyone look at Alex right now. He's googling <laughs> what a blue shell does in Mario Kart. No, I'm not. He's going to... What, what did I do to you, Alex? You're going to Google it and be like, ah, damn. I did nothing to deserve this. How much do you think it weighs? Like, could I... like? I think it weighs, I... like, a pound. It's empty, so, okay. like, not that... He- right. There's no turtle inside of it, God forbid. <laughs> okay, so, like, we're just careening, and Arnold would see this shell appear in front of him and instinctively cast Mage Hand to just punch the shell out of the way. Okay. what happened. Yeah. Uh, left or right, Arnold? Um, right. Okay. You cast Mage Hand and you punch the shell and it slams. Actually, before I tell you what happens, roll a okay. dexterity uh, attack, Arnold. Let's see uh, how well you hit it with this Mage Hand. You got it. Come on. Boy, this episode is fucking D&D rules light. I tell you what. We're just playing Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Best terrible. day ever. I, yeah, right. I, um, so Arnold unfortunately rolled a three on his dex attack. Okay, uh, I think Arnold, you can cast Mage Hand. That's fine. Um, I don't think that you slap it out of the way enough. So now, I think what just happens is you just move it just enough out of the way that it misses your car. Okay, cool. You don't get to direct the attack. Um, and I think behind you, you hear a high pitched shattering. Woo-hoo! And then a small child says wahoo and freezes in place. And then you see another car splinter against the back of that car, like uh, a tide against a rock. And then uh, there's like a scream of pain. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, Arnold, you look in front of you and you see the other uh, sort of Italian gentleman. This one's wearing like a long sleeve green shirt. Um, He flips you off and yells, you son of a bitch. Kill her yourself. (laughs) You weren't going to get sued before. <laughs> nah, I'm still good. I'm still good. We like to flirt with copyright lawyers. What's up, baby? It's fine. All right. Anthony, yep. what's the move? You are okay. facing off against two Italian plumbers on cars. Okay. Um. So are they in front of us now? Did they? The, like... I think the red one is in front of you because that's where the turtle shell dropped. And the green right. one has drifted behind you into Mel's sort of like POV. And okay. also notably just said, kill yourself so yeah I mean, luigi did tell you to kill yourself which which is a little uh, or the to... unnamed green italian right man. the fantasy sort of like green italian plumber gentleman okay so so he turns to like flip me off like you know like kill you know kill you you know that um I so tells you to kill yourself yeah when, yeah, when, yeah when he when he does that um i cast minor illusion in front of him as a brick wall <laughs> and i just and i just kind of point like Damn, like, oh, damn. Oh, wait, like Alex, 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 you thing for you, where, like, we, <laughs> we can go right through it. It's not real. But he's going right, to be Right, but for him it is with, by Looney Tunes rules is what I'm saying. No, no, yeah. like for him, what I what I want is for him to turn around and get scared and like fly away is what I'm hoping. It's it's, it's a joke, Anthony. Looney oh, Tunes with the <laughs> Roadrunner and the Coyote and he's 
painted. Okay. So I has the blue shell just now rocketed off into my like direction or Arnold, you see this blue shell careen in front of your car away from your mage hand, darting around this red shirted Italian gentleman with his black mustache and spinning downhill around this curve that you see all of these cars uh sort of like turning around. Uh I believe technically in first place according to uh, my list here, is Milar Light. Because Gareth is not actually, the rat isn't actually registered in the race. Wait, but that, me, oh, I am There's still nothing winning in the, the rule race. Book Did I not specifically says like, that a rat pull can't him race. into the race, though, by saying whoever gets the rat first? Mm -hmm. I get, oh, that's a good point, Diane. I guess you did. Oh, All fine, right. that means I'm technically getting the rat. Uh, <laughs> So well, yeah, I, I mean, just because the rat gets hit, it might help you. Listen, right, all I know is Mel yeah, her kill yourself. It'll be, it'll be chill. She's adding yeah, some right. shit in her cocoa. Yeah. She's ready make, to be done. Make a dexterity saving throw, please. I'm, so I'm going to roll this. for the rat. And I have terrible news for you, my dude. <laughs> I rolled a 19. Sick. I rolled a 4. So... I think you hear like a high pitched whistling, almost like a mortar shell whistling through the air. And you look behind you to see a volleyball sized blue turtle shell spin and slam against this dead rat's back ankle. And this rat fully freezes. And Do rats flips. Have ankles? Yeah. Surely they have yeah, ankles. Sure. They're mammals. They have feet, they have ankles, right? Yeah. And this rat flips over and starts, like, freezes in place, flips over due to the inertia, and starts scraping against this cobblestone street, which essentially acts as, like, a very fine sandpaper, sort of, like, grinding down its face and bone and musculature into, like, a ret streak. It's got to have let go of the stone by now, right? I think, actually, the opposite. Its jaws have frozen around the stone, tightening its grip. It kind of sounds like his jaw has been shredded into sawdust from your description. The bottom of it is slowly shredding into sawdust, and maybe on your next turn it will be loosened into you being Word. able to like try and pry it out. However, what I want to know is, as you guys are slowing, uh, you're probably at the top of this rat. Like It toppled with you on top of it. You've got the knife sort of buried in its spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear... A callous laugh, uh, cold and high pitched, and a set of boots on cobblestones. And you turn to see Geophilump step into this world. As you remember him last, what was he wearing when you last saw him, Gareth, on that fateful night with the with the fire? So this is such a weird reference, but. You remember Toy Story 2? Yeah. You remember that, that like, old farmer toy who was, like, in box? The prospector? It's, it's, it's that fit, like, with the hat <laughs> and, like, the overalls and the red shirt and the beard. Stinky Pete? Is that what he's called? Stinky Pete? Yeah. Holy shit, I haven't seen this mo that movie in so long. Yeah, Diana, so how the fuck like do you not Pete. remember what we did last week, but you pulled I don't Stinky know. Pete out of nowhere? I don't know, okay? My right. mind is a dark, mysterious labyrinth. Gareth, you see Geophilump wearing his suspenders, and he's holding his pickaxe, and he's wearing a 10-gallon cowboy hat with a notch cut into it. And you see him, like, hook a thumb underneath the strap of his suspenders and take a huge breath, a satisfied breath. And he looks at you and says, There's nothing like the smell of the real world, is there? And then he strikes down at you with this pickaxe, attempting to pin you into this dead rat. Uh, and he's going to roll a six. I think as he fucking biffs, Gareth is going to stare him in the eyes and, and go, uh, you're lecturing me about the real world like I'm the one who lit you on fire. Okay. All right. Um, 
it is your turn, Garrett. So you have an action uh, uh, available to you if you'd like to do something. The the rat Light him on is, fire. The rat is slowing. I like to think of uh, Jufflop as like standing on top of this rat. Like he materialized like out of you somehow. And so the two of you are like astride this rat carcass that is frozen in place as it sort of like grinds down against the street. I think... Um... I I, th- I think I'm gonna just just keep keep the dramatic eye contact, right? Okay. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Go go for real heart to heart here, uh, 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 and I'm gonna say, um, I regret every day that you burned to death in that tragic robbery, but you have to realize that it would have made no sense for us both to die. Yeah, I it was tragic. It was terrible of me. But you what, what? You wanted me to rush in there and burn to death so it could be a nice, happy tragedy. But for the, I'm wording this so bad. You're good. For You're the, good. You're for good. The, for, the, for the both of us. All right. It. Uh, I have carried your uh, anger and guilt around with me for however long it's been. I've never actually established the duration. <laughs> Several years, at least. <laughs> Two weeks. It was last month, actually. <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> it was like the day days. before I met. It, it's like I met Arnold as I'm running away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arnold's like, "What's that fire?" Ah, I don't know it's whatever. <laughs> okay, I think uh, Jaffalump looks at you, Gareth, and says, "You could have saved me." I How? I died because you left me. I was trapped under a under a log. It was easy for two people to lift up. Two pe and I was one boy. Well, you think you were gonna get up and help yourself lift the log? Okay. Uh Gareth, do you, do you have an action in mind in addition to this dialogue, or is this the, the basis of your turn? I think uh I'm like trying to slowly weasel the stone free of the jaw its jaws while I'm talking. Okay. Um make a I'll play to your strengths, Gareth. Make a self make a sleight of hand check. Ooh, fuck yeah. I'm doing it. Oh that modifier is so good. I think it'd be really funny, Anthony, if we used one of our Roman candles to light Giop lump on fire. I got it I got it damn. Dark and amazing, yeah. <laughs> It's like, it's like what if Alfred got killed in a robbery and Batman had to watch? It's like Jesus again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I got a twenty-four. Okay. Um, Damn. You managed to, yeah, with a guy, yeah, with a twenty-four, Gareth, you managed to undo the knot holding this leather thong uh, inside this rat's jaws. Diana, I swear to Christ, if you're, you just could you grow up for one minute? Listen. <laughs> Don't ever grow up. Uh, you said now... it. How many times? I really miss Jess at times like this because she and I, we got each other. Gareth, you are holding the stone of galore, uh, sort of like dangling from one fist. I think you've got the leather strands t- clutched into your into your hand. We're gonna go uh, just a little bit back to Milar Light, who I've neglected a little bit. Travis, I'm sorry about that. You uh, have streaked past this carriage uh, that was that was being robbed, handled it well, and you see ahead of you the pack thinning. There's only two cars ahead of you, and actually at the front of the pack, uh, the number one seed, you see the dragonborn car. That's everybody's everybody's banked on to win. He's driving a sweet deep purple and black soapbox car that's got like orange spouts of flame bursting out the back and like music bumping out the bumping out the cab like this dude's fucking vibing um and he's actually like like turning into the turns and like like drifting a little bit around like he's driving very well is the moral of the story before i embarrass myself with my lack of fucking car knowledge any further he's like not hitting stuff and Turning when supposed to. Yeah, oh, exactly. Slow down. Slow down. And there's uh, two cars between you and the front car, Milar. One of them is the is the sea themed car, the bubble car, the one that was fishtailing, and the other is a the car that's shaped like a fox. 
So it's got like a big like red fox skin on it. And in the fish car, you see two full grown adults wearing uh, fish furry costumes. So sort of like sexy goldfish with like a like a like a top mouth spout and uh, tails. And one of them is holding a wand in one hand. And then in the fox car, they uh, the two drivers are wearing uh, fox furry suits. And they are holding balloons. Cool. What's your approach? Are they helium balloons? Well, so I believe at the beginning Fine of reference. the episode, we said that the eggs also fuel the car. Correct. I believe there's, that was one of them. There is so an I'm intake treat valve that. Next, to, next to the basket that's yes. sort of like glowing red. Important, right. it does not take shells. You have to crack the eggs in there. I got Okay. So I'm going to use J, J Pat. He's going to be, he's, we're in sync at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm reaching back. He's biting into the shell. I'm cracking it into this exhaust and I'm treating this as basically my NOS. Uh -huh. And I want nice. to get to the car in front of me. And at this point, I'm out of tricks. So I'm just kind of swerving into uh, whichever car is in front of me, trying to knock him out of the way. Knock him out of the way. Okay. Roll a, I think I would, uh, let's call this an animal handling. It's a skill under it's either, uh, I think it's dexterity. No, it might be charisma. Yep. But uh, I got it. Roll that and we'll, we'll call that for your soapbox handling. We'll, we'll, we'll call that roll good. There's an 11 plus four for animal handling. So 15. Okay. You... Grab an egg, reach back. You hear like a crack as Joshua Patrick uh, splits it neatly in half, and then you drop it into this open intake valve next to your next to your wheel, and you hear your engine scream, belch. No, it just belches. with a belch. It yeah. belches so hard, and the and now that it's properly warmed up, that ale barrel mouth at the front of it like hatches open and like explodes with that lion roar, and your car leaps forward, and I think you grab the wheel and turn it really just roughly like sort of last ditch effort uh straight into the back wheel of the so of the fish themed car and you see it pin to the right and slam straight into the fox car and take both of them like slamming straight into the into the straw wall out of the like they stop dead and it's just oh, yeah. you and the dragonborn number 1 seed and then as you turn a corner, actually, Milar, it's the craziest thing. You see this rat that you were ostensibly told to catch, question mark, but nobody attached a dollar sign to it. So, like, what do you care? Um, you see it, like, sliding against the cobblestones, and behind it is, like, a wet red stain of old blood dabbling no. the cobblestones that's starting to bleed into the cracks between the stones as rain starts to pour from the cast iron clouds. Cast iron clouds. That's a band name if I've ever heard one. We're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the pack with Arnold and Mel. You move through the pack, sort of like dodging left and right. There are a couple more obstacles that you guys navigate really, really well. You see this Goliath, uh, I'm gonna say even desperately slam into the back wheel of this sea themed car and like send it careening into the side of the wall. And you are maybe like 20 feet behind it as the two of you take the last turn and you see the bottom of this hillside stretch out into the into the finish line where the rat that uh, essentially kidnapped your rogue is like sandpapering into the street and there are two cars in front of you and i'm gonna say people screaming on either sides of the street as they see this race like fully devolve into what it currently is and there's a click and a hiss arnold you turn to the side to see somebody somebody like pulling a lever the size of a human being like like leaning against it as they pull it down and there's a section of the street that shears off with a grating of rocks and pops up into an impromptu ramp. Fuck yeah. Okay. Do you take the ramp or do you swerve to the side, Arnold? Oh, fuck yeah. So we, uh, I, like, Arnold would immediately aim toward the ramp and hit that button. That's what I would okay. do. Perfect. Eggs. Put more eggs in. So you 
Are we all egg powered? I I'm not. That's what. Clear that's what it was. The beginning. They said it was egg powered. No, I know the one was, but I didn't no. know if all of the soapbox cars were egg powered. All of the soapbox cars have an intake valve next to their joysticks or wheels or whatever that is egg powered. But are, Arnold's okay. car also has like a red firework button that I'm I'm assuming he hits. Yes, that's right. what I said. Yeah, I hit that button. So Arnold, you sm you slam this button and turn to this ramp. And like Icarus ascending to graze the surface of the sun, you and Mel shoot into the air, careening down this hill. And I think it's a, I think it's a dexterity saving throw, Arnold, to see if you can handle it as it slams back into the street. All right. Let's see. I believe in him personally. I do too. And Cor just because of that, he gets advantage. Nah. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. Let me see. Um, so I got a 19. 19. Okay. Your soapbox car slams into the street with like a thud and like this crowd around the street, like you hear them scream and alarm. As you flew up into the air, you saw the like shocked face of this Goliath driving Joshua Patrick look up in awe as you pull neck and neck with him and you slam into the street. I think the back of your of your soapbox car pinwheels and you have to fight for control there are pieces of it flying off mel you see several of these fireworks fall into the street and then one of them like catches a light and explodes into the crowd with like red and green and blue sparks and people are screaming and running away from it as it like sets a small house on fire and that's where we're gonna get our fingers later remember that for the finger bounty suddenly it is a four-way race to the finish line of the Waterdeep Rumble colon Downhill Fury as Milar Light, the Goliath, with Josh Pat running co-pilot, Arnold and Mel, Gareth uh, and Jaffalump on a dead rat, and this... Uh, yeah, we're kind of at a standstill. No, 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 you're still going. You're going slow, but you're still sort of like scraping uh, the rats the street. Like... <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> as you all come neck and neck for the last like 10 feet of these of this race and you pull up and Arnold actually Mel I think you turn to see this dragonborn for the first time and you see that his car is like low down to the ground and aerodynamic and has like a bored out like screaming boar head engine poking out of the out of the front and he and he looks at you and his head is shaved bald and he's wearing a jean cut off shirt and he holds one hand on the wheel and turns to you and says, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. He's doing it for family. I was He's gonna doing... say, does he say something about family? He says it's for family. <laughs> and then he says this franchise started out as us stealing DVDs and now we're here. Uh, so I think everybody deserves a chance to win the race. But I think I'm going to go to the person who deserves it most right now, who's done the most work to keep the race going and to make Thank it interesting. You. And that is Milar Light. What do you do? You're neck and neck for... He's the only one that was, like, legitimately in the fucking race besides... Yeah, what, what did you want me to do thingy. specifically? Like, I don't know. I was know. not exactly given... Listen, listen, listen. You thought I planned any of this beforehand? I in didn't fact, even know what a blue I, turtle shell did before I started this episode. I should have. Yeah, I want to point out that this entire episode, I hooked into the rat and then exploded. And you're like, <laughs> you don't deserve to win. I mean, to be fair, we weren't you even don't. trying to win. Like, we I were trying, trying to trying survive, to catch damn you. it. Then tell you what, the person who, who, who actually wanted to win the race gets an opportunity to do so. Yeah, the one who entered the race in order to win it. Yeah. Milar Light, four-way tie. It's you and Dominic Toretto. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, blackout at this point sure. in the race. Just been IV, you know, alcohol right into the veins. 0.24 uh, blood alcohol uh, level. Right. Um, is it too dark to say that I pull... 
a um a Paul Walker at this point. I mean, Hold on, let me Google something real quick. <laughs> who, like, who is Paul Walker? And no. make it to the end of the first movie at least, right? And, and like by by being a hero at the end of the you first movie. You pulled out the Fast and Furious reference. I did, I'm just but, saying. I mean, I mean, listen, hey, listen. I'm drunk you're the, driving while you're racing. The, you're the guest. You can do whatever you want. That's what I'll say. All right. I'm I'll I'll at least make an attempt to do the same thing I did again and swipe the dragonborn to try to get him to careen off into the hay bales. Okay. Um you pull on your wheel because he's he's sort of like next to you and the two of you like collide your soapbox car and his slam against each other as you all like sort of skid into the last like 10 15 feet of this racetrack and he looks to you and his eyes dig into yours Milar and he says how how could you and he's and he says you were you were one of my family how could you betray me like this and then the How race could track. You do this to me, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> I'm, I attempt to eloquently say some sort of rebuttal, mm -hmm. but again, I'm blackout. Dog, you doggo. <laughs> uh, fuck you. And then I just careen off into him. Beautiful. I think really well put. Uh, Josh Pat barks at all the right moments to sort of like under under underlay what you're saying. He's the hype man. Yeah. And you pinwheel, and actually, like, one of your wheels of your soapbox car breaks one of his. And he has to he has to make a choice, staring at the finish line, staring at you, who he swears is his family, of does he, does he finish the race or does he save his own car? And you see him pull his soapbox emergency brake and, like, slam into the side hay bale as you, Milar Light, coast across the finish line as like i imagine the ends of like the sides of your wheel beer keg soapbox car are like falling off oh yeah there's no wheels i'm just it's skidding across it's just like sparking yeah. it's just like yeah. the undercarriage like hits the, the cobblestones yeah okay uh all right milar light wins the water deep rumble downhill fury and Gareth, I think you, your your rat corpse stops like a few feet shy of the finish line, but you, I don't imagine you super care anyway. No, I do, I do have a, a, a resolution for Geophilump here if you're willing, but we yeah. can cut it out if you're not with it. No, let's do it. Get in there. Okay, so I think as the rat corpse finally kind of tuckers out. Um, it just gets tired. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I think I'll like stand, maintaining eye contact with Geophilump. Can I do another little, uh, just like stick the stone of glory in my pocket? Do a little side of hand, so who knows which pocket it's in or whatever. We can not worry about that. Also, uh, I'll just say you have it in your possession, and we can just okay, move cool. on with that. And then I think I want I want to look at him. How close am I to Geophilump? You're like, both. Could I, could I stick an arm out in front of me at, without like touching him? Yeah, I mean, you're both standing on this, like, comically large dead rat corpse. I think what he is on one side of it, and then there's a big old tire track in the middle, and then you're standing on the other. There is a physical and metaphorical gap between the two of you. Nice. Okay, so I think I'll, like, just kind of stick my hand out dramatically, and I'll lo look at him and be like, both of us have not moved on since that day. You're here in anger, and I'm here in regret, and I think both of us need to move on. And then I think in a turn of events, rather than me going towards or going to my knife, Gareth is going to try to teleport his knife to his outstretched hand. I think Geophilump looks at you, and he his eyes are narrowed in, I mean, the nth degree of hatred. Gareth, this man hates you to your core, but there's a moment where you realize that the reason he hates you is because that's all he has. Even as you extend this hand in in an olive branch and you try to try to like literally bridge that gap between the two of you, you see him choose the other thing, 
Because if he doesn't, he's got nothing left. Because the hatred is easier sometimes. That's insane. And with a satisfying thud, your knife teleports into your outstretched hand. And he wavers like the mirage you know he is and disappears with a with a scream that evaporates into the cold, rainy air. Badass. Now we, we, we getting deep. Milar Light, an efficient of the race, uh, runs up to you. It's one of the members that uh, we, the the uh, cast, recognize from the committee at the front. He's got uh, like a really cheap toupee and a uh, a gel waxed mustache. Uh, runs up to you and thrusts a heavy golden cup into your hands and uh, hoists you onto sort of like a raised podium and says, ladies and gentlemen, we, we have the winner of the Waterdeep Rumble Downhill Fury season two. It is, uh, uh, what, what, uh, what is your name, dear, dear boy? Um, Milar Lite. Uh, Milar Lite. Uh, not only will he win this exclusive um, uh, uh, sort of cup, but uh, he also wins, and this is, this is the, the grand prize, a lifetime subscription to the tavern in Waterdeep of his choice. Uh, have you uh, perhaps thought about it? I know that there are a number of uh, taverns that have had their names in the ring for, for attention. Several notable establishments, the Crown and Thorn, the Lion's Rumble, the Deerfart. Well, I've been kicked out of all of them. The Deerfart. So... Uh, yeah, is there perhaps a, the... is there perhaps a new... Yeah, uh, you guys are all like right next to it. You all hear this. Oh, can I just like send message into him, like, or or if I'm next to him, I'm gonna be like Troll Skull Manor. <laughs> like, I, just, I like, think a... Arnold, you're you're close enough that you can like catch his attention just and say, whisper. Okay. okay, cool. Then instead of I, yeah, that's what I was hoping for. So I was like, oh, I hear that Troll Skull Manor is really good and very affordable water. Yeah, that one. That one. What he said. I don't I, remember what. It, I, uh, Troll Skull. Gareth, I think who just finished having this deep heart to heart <laughs> is immediately like, whoa, 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 no, 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 just like sprints over, like screaming, no, absolute, I, there has been no such agreement, no contracts, nothing. The uh, oh. this wax mustached official Gareth looks at you, um, sort of down his nose at you because you're like covered in blood. And there are like several burn marks in your sleeves where Geophilum's hands have like burnt through your clothes. You I just look, like Gareth just rat. looks like shit all yeah. the time. You just look like shit. One lens of your sunglasses is broken. <laughs> uh, and he says, uh, Don't worry, dear boy. The city will reimburse you for 30% of the cost. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. Um, so. Milar uh, Light Lite. I forget how you say your last name. Whatever. Lite. Milar wins the Waterdeep Rumble Downhill Fury. Gareth, you have the Stone of Galore. Uh, Arnold, you successfully piloted your way through this obstacle course in a car that you've never driven, which is very impressive. And Mel, you also did a great job. And Mel showed up on time. Wait, wait, wait. Does Mel like look over and see like Josh Pat in the car still like looking for her? Oh, I think Josh Pat is like he probably would have jumped out. Yeah, yeah, I think Josh Pat jumped out and was like equally excited for his new friend to win a trophy, and also like mom's here, and so like I think he's like I imagine he grabbed the trophy, not left the coin, but he grabbed the trophy as like a bone and brought it back. Equally, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. What I did, Mama. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, Josh Pat runs up to you with a winged golden trophy in his mouth, hey. and his and his tongue is wagging. Badass tongue is wagging. His t- is that what I said? What tail? His, his tongue tail. is wagging. <laughs> well, you know what? His tongue's wagging too. Fuck it. Sure. His tail is lolling. <laughs> okay. Uh before we close it out, Travis, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for being a guest on our show. Um, could you please tell the audience about your many shows and endeavors and where the people can find you? Yes. So I am a co-host of the Bar Pan- Bar Banter podcast. I have been drinking as well as my <laughs> character. Um, the Bar Banter podcast. And we are an unscripted comedy podcast that tackles everything from the absurdities of everyday life to the latest pop culture trends. Mm-hmm. We make listeners feel 
comfortable and a part of the show while listening. And our topics tend to invoke irrationally passionate feelings towards the discussion. We talk about things such as what's the best Starburst flavor? Uh, when you're flying, does the person in the middle seat get to claim both armrests yeah. or things like Ooh, okay. which children's cartoon would make the best prison gang leader? And uh, we record every week. We release every week, every Wednesday, sometime in the morning. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple, Google Podcasts. We have a YouTube and Instagram that hopefully we're going to be updating as soon as I get off my ass and do it. But, you know, we're uh, we're all around and you can. <laughs> Bestie feels that in his bones. Do, is there a, like a multiple choice of cartoon character? Because there's a lot of children's cartoon characters. I'm, honestly, a lot of... I'm, a, I'm going with Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. That was the first thing I was thinking so of, honestly. Many that you could... he, not bad. Not bad. I think that one we ended up going with Papa Smurf. Interesting. He's maybe, already or... basically a cult leader, so can, might as well. Can, if if the main character is more than one person, do you get all three? Because I think Ed, Ed, and Eddie would run someplace. I mean, they can't even run their own cul-de-sac. Why would you think they run <laughs> a, a prison? Like, That's true. Let's get Kevin three, in there, actually. Then you you could pick like the Powerpuff Girls I was, because I was they're sure. super powered. Yeah, but I mean, that's the, this be, is the dumb the shit we girls, talk about. Would the Powerpuff Girls be in a gang? Absolutely. If they were like in prison, whole... absolutely. Dexter and Papa are... Smurf be in a gang? Just Dexter as likely would absolutely as the Powerpuff be in a gang. Girls are. Yeah, and they were all Craig McCracken, so... If you would like to hear the actual version of this delightful show and not our doped up have been drinking our wish.com version yeah, if you don't want the wish.com <laughs> version of the bar banter podcast travis where can the people find you yeah we're on spotify apple Podcasts, google podcasts um everywhere where you get your podcasts except stitcher because they're gone um and uh yeah we're, we're everywhere all right everybody go find the bar banter podcast i mean they're the the topics they tackle have been Interesting to the point where we almost started recording an episode of the Bar Banter podcast here on our show. So I can only imagine that they actually do it well on their show, and you should go check them out. Uh, Travis, thank you so much for being here. You have been a delight. Absolute pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. There, I just realized I didn't have my notes pulled up. I'm so sorry. Give me two seconds. We have a lot of scenes to yeah, get through. We've got a lot yeah, to get keep, through, and we're, we're like, here, like I actually. gave you like a solid ready, twenty minutes where I was struggling with my internet, where you could oh, have God, addressed so that. All right, shut up. <clears throat>